for weeks, people said no. It can't be done. It's an obstacle far too large to overcome. Perhaps a smarter man than I would have heeded some of this advice, but I'm not just a man of simple mind, I'm a dreamer too. Of all the things I needed for this trip, sound advice was not one of them. My dog has no idea about my disrepute with the law and that's probably a good thing. I'm not sure she would have agreed to join me otherwise. Over the past few months I had noticed a trawler which seemed abandoned in an estuary, sitting in what is ostensibly a significant state of decay and resigned to the day when it's removed from the bay. Its nets haven't been dropped in months, the deck completely devoid of moist fish and engine grunts. But tonight, just for one night, this vicarious vessel would host my dog and I just as a tree hosts a spider. For one lonely December night, this river was about to get a little more full. I was delighted to find the trawler was still there. I didn't have a plan for if the estuary lay bare, but I was well aware that a night on the floor of a mangrove forest wasn't going to be as fun as it sounds, and it doesn't sound fun at all, so I sat and observed. The boat seemed undisturbed, but I figured the most prudent course of action would be to wait and see. The tide occasionally tried to wash my boat out to the ocean, so I had to keep a close eye on it to prevent it from being taken away from me. A night in a mangrove forest sounds awful, but a week in a mangrove forest? Fuck, that's a cardinal sin in the eyes of my dog. I'll never be forgiven. Finally, I decided it was time to leave. I had wasted enough time on the beach and this boat wasn't going to camp on itself. I packed my things back into the tinny and cast off, Avalon standing by, not helping at all, not doing anything really but whinging. I paid her no mind as I pulled the boat out to water. I'd whinge too if I had to shit in the backyard every day. was a painless affair. The water lapped at the side of the deck as contact was made betwixt Tinny and Trawler, and as I crawled aboard and tied them together, Avalon jumped onto the aft and promptly took stock of our new surroundings. I set up my camp chair, sat down and reflected. I'd made it on board and the boat was in much better shape than I expected. There was a dull sheen to the marginally clean floor. It wasn't pristine, but it wasn't filthy either. Various styles gave little clues as to how long it had been since anyone had used this fine fishing vessel. The batteries were either dead or disconnected, which rendered the various switches, arranged in a very old boat-like fashion, completely useless. Sadly, it looked like I would not be using the bilge pump tonight. The hydraulic system used for pulling in the fishing nets was similarly lifeless, so doing my own bit of trawling was also off the table. One segment of the windscreen was conspicuously missing, which I imagined would make fishing on the high seas a tempestuous tirade of salt water and wind-chapped lips. Seagulls had clearly taken pleasure in pooing on the boat's stool. A single solar panel on the roof powers the masthead light, which I imagined was the only sign of life on this boat most nights.
it was time for a spot of fishing. Succulent chicken breast was to be my bait of choice, and I've hoisted a few fish out of these waters with a bit of chook on me hook before, so I figured stick with what you know and go with the flow. I jigged the thingy on the curly fish stabber and wailed my line onto the murky depths of the dirty urban river. I figured it'd be a little while until I snagged a flatty, so I took the proverbial pew and sat down to enjoy the view. Bloody beautiful, mate. Not only was my shitty guitar playing rudely interrupted by a hungry fish, it didn't even have the common decency to let me catch it. As I cast again, I feared my rod may not be up to the task of catching the calibre of fish that I was looking for, and as the evening wore on, I spent more time replacing hooks lost to these little bastards than I did actually fishing, much to the chagrin of myself and the amusement of the dog. Looks like I finally caught something. While I was wishing for a fish with some culinary use, I got the biological equivalent of a discarded boot. This one wasn't exactly a competition winner. I didn't fancy the idea of a catfish dinner, not least due to the substance of dubious origin coating its weird, scaleless body. Still, a fish well fought is a fish well caught, in my opinion. Back to the river you go, you ugly little bastard. After catching another one, I decided that this was no longer fun. It looked like fish was off the menu tonight, but I wasn't terribly surprised. I surmised that Brisbane is filled with bottom feeders. Why would the waterways be any different? Luckily, this time, I came prepared. Tonight's fare consisted of an Asian dish of great flavour, savoured by food lovers as a meal for breakfast, lunch or dinner. Created in China, modified in Thailand, and perfected in Japan, the ancient blood of the tiger runs deep within its thin, noodly membrane. So simple a peasant could make it, yet so delicious a king could enjoy it.
The deep orange rays of the sun penetrated the mangroves on the banks, casting a warm glow over everything that it touched. The constant assault of mosquitoes continued unabated even after heavy application of AeroGuard, fucking useless as usual. Apart from the quiet buzzing of bullets and bugs, the only other thing to break the silence that morning was the fierce brushing of the teeth and the occasional tinny passing by. I wanted to thank the unknown proprietor of this Cecil vessel for allowing me the opportunity to camp for free, so in the spirit of Christmas I left a crisp 20. One by one, I packed my effects back into the tinny as I prepared to cast off and return to society. The silence was finally broken by the low grumble of the outboard. As I left, I felt a strong connection with the vessel. I had shared an intimate evening with a beautiful example of human engineering and part of me desperately wanted to stay. I wasn't sure if what I had done could be considered bad taste, but I knew that I absolutely must do it again. Next time though, I'm going to need a bigger boat.